garage for episode two. Now off camera, I did take the motor out of the VZ already. I had a bloke come around, short notice, test drive the car. He loved how it ran. He wanted the motor for his hot rod project. So we had to pull it out quick smart. He bought it. Now it's no motor, it's gone. I'll show you through there. Probably took two hours to get out. Nothing too hard, but yeah, she's gone. So on today's episode, probably work on pulling this apart because my priority is to get the cam out of there. It's got a stuffed lifter, I know that for sure. I'll show you how I saw that through the sump. I'll go through it. And it's got a stuffed lifter, so what I need to find out whether the cam is stuffed up. I need to get the cam out of there and inspect it or even take it to an engine engine machine shop and see what they think. See if it can be polished and reused. If not, order a new cam, order new lifters. Get this thing back together as my priority. So today, I'll probably set you up on the tripod. Maybe do a bit of time lapse and we'll step by step take this apart and have a look what's inside. Yeah, okay, first things first. We're going to take all this turbo kit off this motor. It was just a good way to store it while it was sitting here, so... I'll jump in and out of time lapse, but first thing I do is take the wastegate off the dump, the wastegate dump, screamer pipe they often call it, and I'll take on this side the standard exhaust manifold off, so I'll quickly whip them off. take the crossover off the V-band and I'll get this turbo manifold off with the turbo all as one unscrew the feed and return 13mm bolts off the manifold that V-band, get it off
Okay, now we'll take the alternator and the water pump off because eventually the harmonic balancer and the timing case will have to come off. So, just to make it lighter before I flip it over. Okay, now for the sump, a whole heap of 12mm bolts all the way around the outside of the sump, a couple of 10mm bolts on the top, they go into the rear cover, and some plastic covers either side, one for the starter and one for this offside, to fill the gap for the bell housing normally, so they have to come off. Now I don't really need to get this sump off, but I have had it off, and I'll take it off again so I can have a, have, I'll show you the internals of this engine. It's quite interesting to look at, so let's hook in. Righto, now we'll get the windage tray off. We've got the 13mm bolts that hold the windage tray off and there's a little bolt in there on the oil pump. You've got to get the bolt out to get that, uh, what do you call that, oil, oil pick up. Okay, sorry about that last clip. Phone ran out of memory halfway through that, so I end up getting that windage tray and oil pickup off, exposing all the goodies. So we'll go in there and have a bit of a look. I'll show you where I saw that busted lifter. Okay, after a bit of stuffing around, that there that you can see is the roller on the bottom of the hydraulic lifter. The bolt just above it's just the just the cap bolt for the conrod. So I'll come out. And that's how I found it. Just zooming in. Just looking right in. End up finding that lifter stuff. So that's why we have to take this apart. That's why it had a bit of a a bit of a tap, a bit of a tick. You can see the rest of this here. You can see. SRP pistons. They're actually Cali's Comstar rods printed in the side of them I've seen before. So they're Cali's Comstar ARP 2000 bolts in the rods. 
You'll see the cross hatching on that bore, this motor's still like new. Yeah. Serious cross hatching there. Get some light on it. Yeah, it hasn't, you can see that there, it hasn't done a lot of work at all. And even the guy that me mate bought the car off said he'd barely driven it. I think he'd done two dyno sessions. Then my mate bought that yellow U does is and then the lifter stuffed up, so I was lucky enough to pick this up for a good price. So I'll give you a bit of a look in the bottom there. I'm actually going to throw all that back on just to cover it while it's waiting for the new cam. Put all the windage tray back on. You probably don't need to see me put that back on. So I'll quickly jump back and I'll put all this back on and I'll um, flip the engine back over and we'll look at getting the heads and cam out. Okay, the windage tray, oil pickup and sump back on, flip the motor back over. I think it's 10 8mm intake bolts. Take them out and I'll be able to take that whole intake manifold off. The throttle body will come with it. Fuel rail will come with it all as one. No point splitting all that up for no reason. So I'll whip that off. Okay, obviously intake manifolds off. Already just having a look in there. We get a torch. There's certainly been some some sort of hand porting in there, which is good, I suppose. I don't really know much about porting, but if they spent spent some time in around there, might flow a bit more. These heads with the square port, or rectangle port, oval port, they're not cathedral port, they're the better heads to have anyway. Better than the LS1, supposedly. They all work, LS. Just put boost into them and they love it. Look at the tunner. Stock motor and it, it hammers. So next thing I'll, I'll rip these coil packs. I'm going to get rid of this bracket here. Get that out of the way. And I'll also get rid of the steam steam tubes because I can't get to these top little head bolts here while those steam tubes are there. So I'll get rid of all that. Okay, I'll quickly whip them coils off. Now I'll take the rocker cover off, expose the, the rockers. Okay, you can see the rockers, got to go through with the Allen key and undo all them, get all them off. That'll give me access to all the head bolts. You can also see in there, it's got a big set of double valve springs in there. It's good to see, good quality valve springs. So we'll get hook, in, hook into that and get all them out. And go on to the other side. I oh, still got to pull the, pull the push rods out of this side, but yeah, they're a nice trend push rod. So they're an upgraded chromoly push rod. They're actually thicker than stand. You can feel it. Okay, the rockers are out, we're ready to unbolt the heads. One thing I did notice when I had a bit of an inspection of these rockers 
is that it's actually had a trunnion upgrade. It's been bushed. The needle bearings have been taken out. So it's another good little upgrade that's in there. Another thing I noticed too is that these ARP bolts are in these heads. Even though this is a new generation Chevy engine and most of the bolts are all metric, ARP must still be stuck in the past because they're a 12 point what's that one? 12 point bloody 3 8 and the big ones are 12 point half inch so it's always something worth remembering ARP stuck in the past Okay, onto the half inch studs now, all well, the small ones are out. The lock to undo them, the opposite to how you would do them up, is a specific sequence that you would have to torque your heads down. Generally it starts from the middle and then slowly works out each end. So when I undo it, I'll do it the opposite each end and slowly work my way to the middle. Probably just helps with head deflection maybe or something. It's not that hard just to do it, so why not? Okay, ready to pull the head off. Head's off. The, the middle washers are hard to get out, so I'm hoping I'll pull the head off and just tip the head over and the washers for those studs will fall out. I did lose one of the nuts down into the lifter tray, so hopefully it's just chilling out in there for me as well. But hopefully these will just pop straight off. can't really tell what brand they are, but they're definitely multi-layer steel, so that's a good thing. Okay, now the other head, slide off easy. Okay, just give you a look over this. You can see she's been a pump fuel, quite rich setup. Still got good cross hatching in the bores. Pistons are a little bit carbony. Everything looks looks legit though. It's good. Next thing we'll do is we'll grab those lifters out, those buckets and those lifters out and um, have a look and see which ones are shot. Okay, let's slide this gasket out of the way. Actually, a little mark in that one. Little marks. Not great. That was the second one from the end there. Third one in. No, it's perfectly fine.
fourth one in. Perfectly fine. That second one's definitely not perfectly fine. We'll go back to this first one. First one. There's scratch marks on it, but it's perfectly fine. Seems smooth. Well, so far, just the second one on this side is not happy. So we yeah, fifth one. Yeah, it looks good. Sixth one. That looks good. Seventh one. That looks good. Eighth one. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, other side, let's have a look. Looks good. Looks good. Resistance. That is absolute rat shit. Probably shouldn't say shit, but there's truly no other explanation for that. Third one from the back, third one from the front, sorry. I'll go and check the orientation of that, but you can see that, that roller, she not round. So that would just cause noise and chaos. Tapping, especially this flat section there, it's just. Hopefully the cam survived it, hopefully it's hard enough, but to be honest, looking at that, I highly doubt it. That's been chewing. So, we'll keep on looking. It's funny, it was that same, I think it was the same lifter, it might have been the second one on the other side actually, second one back. It was a bit chewy. Not as chewy as that though, that's sh shocking. That's sweet. That's also, oh, hang on. And a couple of little tap marks on it, little tiny imperfections in it there and there. A couple of little marks. Oh, she chewy all the way around the edges there. Not happy. Not happy at all, actually. I dare say this can't really be bugging. That one's fine. No. And fine. Okay. Three chewy lifters. It's going to throw the gaskets and the washers and the bolts back on these studs just for storage. Because once I get that cam out, I'm going to wrap this up. So I'll just do. I'll just quickly throw them on off camera. Okay, I'll just put the buckets back in, bolted them in, there's no lifters, threw the gaskets on, all the washers, all the nuts, can't go missing for storage. Best way to do it than rather than sitting on the bench or somewhere where they can roll off the bench, I just think it's a lot better putting it like that. Next thing we move on to, we're going to take this balancer off so we can get the front timing cover off. 27 mil bolt, it's a big ARP bolt they've used in there which is good to know. Uh, undo that a little bit, 
and then we'll get the puller on there and pull it off. It's obviously very tight. So use heat, heat that up, sometimes it works. Give it a go. Off camera, heat gun worked a treat. Probably only been gone for a couple of minutes. It, as soon as you heat them up, they just buzz straight out. It's good. So you just want to Pull the bolt out a little bit so the balancer has room to move out. But you need to leave the bolt in there so that the, the puller has something to push against. So we'll get this on there. It can be a bit awkward sometimes. Ended up just throwing a, uh, what was it, 21 mil or something, real deep socket in there. Sits against the nose of the crank and then pull off of that. Okay, got the balancer off. Did fall and break me tray a bit, but uh, it's alright. Now i got to go around, get the sensor out, the cam angle sensor and the timing case bolts. There is two bolts that go up through the sump into the timing case or timing cover I should say I left them out so they're already out so I'll whip through them and take that case off Okay, timing case off. That sensor didn't really have to come out to get that off. Um, I don't think I'm going to take the oil pump off at this stage. I'll just undo the three bolts on the front of the cam, get the cam gear off, get the cam out. When I go back to put it back together, I'll probably take the oil pump off, dial it all in, put the oil pump back on. But at this stage, I'll just get that cam out. So three bolts in the front of that cam there, getting them out. I'm right, just going to remove that cam retaining plate with those four funky looking bits. What are they two? T40s. Get them out. Okay, now we can wheelie this cam out. Let's grab a water pump bolt bit longer, give you something to lever on. Actually, 
she is. I'll uh, get set up and um, we'll take a closer look at these lobes and see which ones are destroyed and which aren't. Okay, cam's out. I threw the retainer plate back in there, bolts back in there. Everything back on with all the bolts, that way you don't lose it. I've been through that, all the rockers are installed back underneath inside these heads. Rocker covers back on, keep all the junk off it while it sits here. Might sit here for a week waiting for the new cam and lifters. All stacked up so you know where everything is, all the bolts with everything. Makes everything easy, it's definitely a tip I have for people. Uh, gonna throw a, throw a rag over this, a little drop sheet over this. Keep it sealed up. And yeah, we can have a bit of a look at the the cam damage. I don't really know what would, would have caused this. But, yeah, if we'll focus, we'll see. You can clearly see there that that lifter is just toast. That one there has some flat spots on it, on the outside edges. Same as that one, flat spots on the outside edges. You can see there, I don't know if that's from valve bouncing, what they would call valve bouncing. In this cam, I'm pretty sure it's a pretty aggressive grind too. It's like a 234, 238 at 114. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm going to do some research and check it all out, but you can definitely see that that lobe there is absolutely shot. It is chewed. It's getting dark here, so it's hard for me in the light. That one there is also chewed. You can see she's all chewed up. And then also, that one there is chewed up. So I don't know, this cam is not even worth checking to see if it can be saved, it's toast. So, I'll uh, have a look at the numbers on the back here and get online. My mate does have the cam card for this engine build. So I'll probably do some research, might even look at maybe a slightly less aggressive cam so it's not so much stress on the valve train. I've found in the past that over camming the crap out of these engines just it's the first thing that wears out is bloody lifters so I'd rather back the cam off a little bit not so aggressive and the engine will live longer okay it's not gonna sound as mental because I will say that that uh, yellow ute did sound pretty good but yeah it'll last longer so I'll do some research I'll get back to you when I choose a cam and we'll talk about that but yeah, just swinging spanners for today's episode. Something different. Never really done that before. Hopefully, I edited it all right. Get the get the bloody time lapse sorted, so you're not watching me just pull bolt out all day. But if you like this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe. Any questions, comment, like it. That'll be all right. Let's see how we go. I'll see you on the next one.